out-of-body experience. You're lying in bed and suddenly it feels like you floated up to the ceiling. You can see your own body just chilling down below. That's an out-of-body experience. Creepy? Yes. Supernatural? Not really. Just your brain glitching bad. Your brain is the air traffic controller. It constantly monitors your position using sight, touch, balance, and proprioception. That's the fancy word for knowing where your limbs are without looking. All that data normally gets merged in the temporal parietal junction. But if that system errors out, because of stress, seizures, trauma, or even sleep paralysis, the control tower misplaces you. Instead of putting you in your body, the system projects you somewhere else. Scientists have recreated OBEs in labs by nudging that brain region with mild electrical currents. And during sleep paralysis, it can feel like your dream self got ejected, leaving you hovering while your body snoozes below. Around 10 to 15% of people report at least one OBE. It's vivid, surreal, and honestly wild. But it's your brain mismanaging flight paths, not actually your body leaving the pilot seat. Brain freeze. You're happily demolishing an ice cream cone, living your best life, and then BAM! A sharp pain slams right into your forehead like your brain just rage quit the game. That, my friend, is the dreaded brain freeze. When super cold stuff hits the roof of your mouth, it chills a nerve cluster tucked behind your face called the sphenopalatine ganglion. Think of it as the brain's temperature alarm system. This nerve is wired up to the trigeminal nerve, the big boss that monitors temperature and pain across your face. So when that cold blast lands, your brain basically panics. It thinks your entire head is under attack. To fight back, it cranks open blood vessels in your brain to flood the area with warm blood. That sudden traffic jam of blood creates pressure, and your brain, confused as ever, reads that pressure as pain. That's the stab in the head moment. And people who get migraines? They're more likely to get brain freezes, though scientists are still scratching their heads on why. Moral of the story? Ice cream sometimes hurts because your brain is dramatic. Deja vu. You're walking through a brand new building when suddenly a chill runs down your spine. The walls, the smell, the footsteps, it all feels weirdly familiar. That's deja vu. It's your brain tripping over its own wiring. Picture your brain as a streaming service. Normally, new experiences play instantly in HD, but if the signal lags by even a split second, the replay arrives just late enough that your brain mistakes it for something from the archives. Fresh scene, but it feels like a rerun. Scientists think this happens because the same information takes two different neural routes. If one arrives out of sync, the second gets mislabeled as a memory. Another idea is your temporal lobe, the episode guide of your brain, sometimes fires too early, shouting, We've seen this one, even though you haven't. It's a harmless, glitchy double stream, more likely to show up when you're tired, stressed, or zoned out. Jamais vu. You're sitting at your kitchen table, same one you've eaten at for years. Suddenly it feels off, like you're in a low-budget knockoff of your own house. That creepy disconnect? That's jamais vu, the evil twin of deja vu. Instead of the new feeling old, the familiar feels like it's the first time you've ever seen this. Your brain works like a label maker, slapping tags on things instantly. Hand, labeled. Kitchen, labeled. Cat staring at you, definitely labeled. But in a jamais vu moment, the mental label maker jams. The tag doesn't come out, and suddenly your perfectly normal kitchen feels like you've wandered into an IKEA showroom you can't afford. Scientists trace this to the temporal lobe, the recognition department of your brain. If it hiccups, the link between I know this and I see this doesn't connect. Stress, exhaustion, or brain overload make this more likely. In rare cases, people with epilepsy even report it before seizures. Freudian slips. Words are tricky little things. Most of the time, they flow out smoothly, and then you blurt out, I love your butt instead of I love your pants, to a colleague. That's a Freudian slip. Freud thought these slips exposed your secret feelings. Today's scientists say it's less hidden desires and more software bug. Your brain is running the world's fastest autocomplete. It's pulling words from memory, lining them up, and launching them out, all in the blink of an eye. And just like autocorrect, it sometimes swaps in the wrong option. Stress, nerves, or plain exhaustion crank up the error rate. Worse, trying not to say something makes it way more likely to escape. That's the white bear problem. The more you push it down, the louder it barges through. Most slips are silly, brush tooth instead of toothbrush. 
But every so often, your brain drops a phrase that feels less like a mistake and more like sabotage. Let's just hope you don't end up in HR's office next time a Freudian slip happens. Pareidolia. You ever glance up at the moon and suddenly there's a creepy face staring back? That's not you going crazy. That's your brain running its favorite glitch. Pareidolia. Think of your brain like an overzealous emoji detector. It's scanning everything. Clouds, toast, even sockets. Desperate to slap a smiley face sticker on it. Why? Because humans are built with a find-the-face speed boost. Deep inside your brain, there's a zone called the fusiform face area. It lights up like a motion sensor the second it sees two dots and a line vaguely in the shape of a face. This glitch used to keep us alive. Seeing a face in the bushes, even if it was just leaves, was safer than missing an actual predator. Basically, your ancestors survived because they were paranoid about life. And it's not just visuals. Play music backwards and some people swear they hear creepy hidden messages. Your brain's just so desperate for patterns, it'll connect dots that aren't even there. Frequency illusion. You decide it's time for a new car. Let's say a bright red hatchback. The moment you drive it off the lot, something weird happens. The road is suddenly packed with red hatchbacks. It feels like the entire city copied your purchase. That's the frequency illusion, or Bader meinhof phenomenon if you want to flex at parties. In reality, those cars were always there. Your brain just wasn't flagging them. Think of it as your mental traffic cop. Normally, it ignores most of the vehicles zooming past. But once you care about red hatchbacks, the cop starts waving that one through. Suddenly, it feels like they've multiplied overnight. Two forces power this glitch. First, selective attention. Your brain spotlights what's now relevant. Second, confirmation bias. Each red car you see convinces you your theory is true. Everyone's driving my car. Obviously, traffic didn't change. Your perception did. The highway's the same. Your brain just flipped the spotlight onto something new. Chronostasis. You glance at a clock. The second hand looks like it's frozen. For one weird heartbeat, time itself seems to stall. Welcome to chronostasis, also known as the stopped clock illusion. Every time your eyes dart from one spot to another, a rapid move called a saccade, your vision blacks out for a blink of a moment. You never notice, because your brain edits the footage like a sneaky film director. It pastes over the gap by stretching the first instant you do see, making it feel extra long. That's why the second hand looks stuck, even though it's ticking away normally. And this isn't just about clocks. The first ring of a phone can feel stretched too, as if your brain hits slow-mo for dramatic effect. Truth is, there's no evolutionary perk here. It's just sloppy time-editing software built into your head. Semantic satiation. Repeat the word apple 20 times. After a while, it doesn't feel like a fruit anymore. It sounds like nonsense. That's semantic satiation your brain's version of getting sick of its own voice. Here's why it happens. Words are powered by circuits linking sound to meaning. But repeat the same track too many times, and those circuits get tired. The neurons start phoning it in and your brain checks out. Suddenly, apple isn't fruit. It's just ah pull, some weird noise you'd expect from a broken Roomba. The funny part? It doesn't take long. Seven to nine repeats is enough to nuke the meaning. But it's temporary. Switch to another word, and the system resets almost instantly. Researchers use this effect in studies, and some therapists even use it to dull the sting of emotionally loaded words. In the end, it's just your brain hitting skip track on language. Doorway effect. You walk into the kitchen with purpose. Two steps in, and your brain deletes the mission like bad save data. Snack, phone, keys, no clue. That mental wipe is called the doorway effect. Your brain organizes life like a video game. Each room is a level, complete with its own map and objectives. Walk through a doorway, and your brain saves the old level, loads the new one, and sometimes forgets to bring your quest with you. Back in prehistoric times, that made sense. Moving from one space to another often meant danger. Move from your safe cave into a new one, and the predators, food sources, and threats were totally different. It helped survival to reset attention fast. Today, that survival feature just makes you forget the Oreos. Psychologists have tested this with virtual reality mazes, and people consistently blanked more after stepping through a doorway than when staying put. So the next time you freeze mid-doorway, don't feel bad. You're just experiencing the world's least exciting loading screen. Rubber hand illusion. Imagine sitting at a table. Your real hand is hidden out of sight. In front of you is a very convincing rubber hand. A researcher starts brushing both at the same time. 
yours, and the fake one. And suddenly, you feel like the rubber hand is yours. Congrats, you've been body snatched by science. This trick works because your brain loves sinking sight and touch. If it sees a hand getting stroked while you feel the exact same sensation, the brain fuses the signals. The logical thought of, that's obviously plastic, gets bulldozed by the sensory data. Brain says, new hand unlocked. Scans even show activity in regions like the premotor cortex, which handles body awareness. And what's more, if you wave a knife near that rubber hand, people flinch. The body knows it's fake, but the brain screams, protect the hand. The rubber hand illusion is basically your nervous system playing VR with no headset required. McGurk effect. You know that moment in a bad dub when the lips say one thing, the audio says another, and your brain throws a tantrum? That's the McGurk effect, when your eyes and ears can't agree, so your brain makes up its own nonsense. Here's the science prank. Play the sound bar while showing lips mouthing car. Your brain refuses to pick one. Instead, it invents a mashup, DAR. Sight says one thing, sound says another, and your brain glitches. Normally, this mashup system is useful. In a loud party, watching lips helps you catch words you'd miss. But when the signals don't match, your brain acts like a bad DJ blending two songs that were never meant to go together. This effect pops up everywhere. Babies fall for it. Adults across languages fall for it. People with certain brain injuries don't, which tells us it relies on specific circuits. Bottom line? Your brain isn't loyal to your ears. It just wants the movie to make sense, even if it has to invent a new soundtrack. If you want to learn more about weird and fascinating body glitches, check out this other video.